Welcome to DIY Volts. I'm Seth. I am sitting here in front of my 30 kilowatt hours of big battery ethos. This is a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery and I have had this installed for one full year. I think I know why you're here. You are about to drop some money on a battery and you want to know is this worth the price tag? So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about my experience with the big battery ethos, and maybe it'll help you to either buy or not buy uh, this particular battery. I installed my 30 kilowatt hours of battery one year ago, and I have to say right off the bat, I have had zero issues with this. It has not thrown an error, it's not blinked, it's had no problems whatsoever. The only thing I have is uh, they don't do anything besides sit here, and uh, dust is collecting on them, which means they uh, don't have to have any maintenance and I can't be more happy than uh, I am with these batteries. So to begin my story with the big battery ethos, I started off with 10 kilowatt hours of battery modules. That is just two modules plus the control board. And I used that in my workshop for a little while and then realized, wow, these are amazing batteries. And so I bought one more unit and had 15 kilowatts of storage in my house. I connected this with my EG4 18K and I've been running a sub panel for the past year. Well, I decided to upgrade into have the 30 kilowatt hours. I am so thankful I did because we had Hurricane Helene roll by and we were 18 days without grid power here and we barely noticed with these batteries installed. So I actually have mine configured in a bit different configuration than most people will. I've got three stacks of two. Most people will have two stacks of three. And so my wiring was just a little bit different, but honestly, it's not that bad of a deal. Let's talk about a typical day using my batteries. On my system, I have the washer and dryer, the refrigerator, I've got the microwave and toaster oven, I've got hair dryers running on this, and computers all day long, all the lights in the house, and a mini split. So typically in a day, I'm gonna use somewhere between 10 and 25 kilowatt hours of solar power, and overnight, of course, I use the batteries. Now, the mini split has been running on this for an entire year as well, and it drains the system down to about 75% capacity overnight. In the winter time, whenever the mini split's using more power with the fridge and all that stuff, I've seen 65%. So uh, I'm using not far from about 15 kilowatt hours overnight. That being said, the 30 kilowatt hours capacity has been great. There are an occasional time during the middle of winter where the batteries, I've seen them drop down to as low as 25%, but most of the time they are hovering up there above 75 all the time. So as far as actually cycling the batteries to zero and then back up, I've never done that. I've always just skimmed off the top and hopefully these batteries will last for a very long time. I've always heard that it's really important to upgrade your batteries at the same time. So I ran 10 kilowatts for a very short time and then stepped it up to the 15 and then 30 within a very short amount of time. And so all the batteries are pretty much the same age. Now, if you've heard this information that the batteries have worked flawlessly for a year, you may be considering buying them. So let me talk to you about how they are installed. It is actually quite simple. You start off with the base plate that just rests on the ground. Then you move your first module, second, third, or however many you're going to be installing on top of that. The control module goes on the very top and now it's time to just mount the batteries to the wall. I actually used a piece of plywood here in my laundry room and mounted to that. And the wiring is quite simple as well. Each battery connects to itself with a communications cable and then that top communications cable goes to the control board and then over to your inverter. So your inverter knows exactly what the charge is on the battery. And then to connect the batteries together with the battery cables, it's also extremely easy. You've got the orange cable and you've got the black cable, so positive and negative. And that just goes from one battery to the next. And then finally, 
from the last battery goes to the control board and then on to the inverter. Now there's actually two cables that go from the control board to the inverter and that allows the amperage to pass through these batteries and go uh, to be used in the house. So uh, the cables are very intuitive and easy to follow. Now you do have to set the bit or the state of each in, uh, battery. So for instance, this one down here is number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then those all um, can tell the inverter uh, which battery is first, second, third, like that. And um, it's once you set it, you leave it and never have to touch it again. That is one of the very nice things about these batteries is I have uh, placed them here and they just work. No problems whatsoever. The inverter knows the state of charge and it just brings it up to 100% and it just sits there. And then once it drops down below, it'll activate the solar again. And I just, I'm singing their praises because it's one of those things where I don't have to worry about it. You install them, you walk away, they work. Now I've sung these batteries praises saying a lot of positive things, but is there anything negative that I would consider with these batteries? Uh, kind of. So the initial set of batteries I had have these uh, plastic side pieces and I had to cut into them in order to get my cables around to the next battery. They have since upgraded to all metal ones and they've got cutouts so that you can um, move your cables around better and not have to worry about the plastic pieces like I've got. So uh, they've upgraded and improved that so I can't really say anything negative about that. Uh, if you wanted to look at each individual battery and find the state of charge you would have to remove those protective end covers and that would it'd be annoying. Um, so I don't ever do that. I always just look at my inverter and I then know the state of charge over the entire stack of batteries. So if you're wanting to do some monitoring, you may have to leave off those covers um, to see those displays. So the big battery ethos is just a battery. It doesn't care if you charge this using some type of grid system or solar power, hydro, wind, as long as the power is coming in and controlled. So if you wanted to install these batteries in your home, and then supplement when the power company charges more, like uh, in the evenings, then you could do that. Or in my case, I have a critical loads panel that runs this house almost fully off grid all the time. And I just focus on the solar. So with the entire house that I've got, minus the cooktop and the hot water, everything is off grid and I have not had to turn on grid power for any of my house stuff in a year. Um, that one time I got close, you know, 25, 30%. And that was because several days of clouds and middle of winter and I had to run the laundry and all kinds of stuff. So, well, I hope that this little update for the one year use of the big battery ethos 48 volt lithium iron phosphate system is helpful to you. I really can't say anything bad about it. I like the way it's modular, easy to move. You don't have to worry about picking up a 300 pound battery. You can pick up 100 pound modules and move them around. And um, I guess if I had to say something about them that was like, eh, is that um, they are indoor only. You can't put these outside because you wouldn't be able to charge them below freezing. And so they do take up space inside of your home. Um, but I was able to double stack these behind me and um, use a fairly small footprint here inside the house. All right, there you go. That's my one year update on the Big Battery Ethos 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. If you wanna check out more information or buy these yourself, I'll have a signature solar link in the description down below. I'm Seth with the DIY Volts channel and I will see you in the next one.